Take a little time to talk about the uh, Timber 110 and how I have it set up. So as you can see, I have the X-Cub gear. Um, I stripped it down and painted it some black carbon enamel, that's what it's called. It's just enamel paint. And here, I got the 8.75 inch PR bush wheels. Um, they're currently out of production, but uh, I think they're looking at starting it up again. Currently I'm flying without the struts, um, only because I'm not doing any aerobatics or any hard G's or mostly just sport scale flying. As you can see under the wing, I got two inch arms from Northwest RC, I'm using the 1.75 inch hole on there. And that um, allows me to get geometry that um, will give me full flaps um, and full span ailerons um, throughout the full motion so that when both surfaces are moved, they will stay aligned throughout the entire range. So they're not gonna be out of sync at any time during during flight. And in the back, you know, nothing special here. Except for my tail wheel. Well, everything's the same as you would see stock. Once again, the 1.75 inch hole on the two inch arm to give me some kind of uh, geometry that I like. Uh, I have six ounces of uh, sticky weights in the tail. As you can see, they're all over the place. Oh yeah, lots of weight. And then my 3D printed tail wheel that I designed uh, specifically for this airplane so it fits inside the stock leaf spring that I painted black. Holds a uh, three and a quarter inch Dubro tail wheel. Or sorry, <laughs> not even a tail wheel. It's a, um, just a soft rubber tire. And uh, as you can tell, it works pretty good. I like it. That's all I got for there. As far as the CG goes on this guy, I've found that the five inch Five inches back from the leading edge is about this part right here on the window So when it's ready to fly It'll be right about there right in the back side of that post and that's about five inches You can go back five and an eighth that flies pretty good five and a quarter um, It starts to act a little funny post stall I have the DLE 55 RA, but it pulls it around pretty good. I like how it starts. The Falcon 23 by eight carbon fiber prop, silver, with a center bolt spinner uh, because the Extreme Flight or most other brands you'll find, there's uh, four holes along here for the uh, screws to hold it into the back plate and it'll run into them on either side. So center bolt spinner works pretty good. You can fit that big prop in that little tiny spinner and all as well. As far as the gear, a couple quick mods. Um, 632 screw back there. So I had to ream it out a little bit on the uh, the bracket that attaches to the fuselage so ream these two sides out and that 632 bolt will fit right through there no problem I'm sure you could use m4 as well but that's just what I have 
and then the strut I ended up shortening about five to seven millimeters is pretty much about what you can do there and the reason being is the gear so as you can see right now that gear is actually looks pretty up and down from this point but they're actually cambered inward like positive camber uh, so it looks a little bit more scale and it's actually quite more functional it gives you a little bit more prop clearance which i like we're on a slope right now so it's hard to see but um in flight you'll figure the tail's up and flying and right now i probably have an extra half an inch of clearance because i shortened those arms a little bit it wasn't my idea but uh it's a good one and it works really well as far as under the hood i'm actually not using the bolts to to hold down the canopy mainly i don't fly inverted i'm not doing pop tops or anything crazy like that so it works for me got a uh, fuji um it's a 17 ounce fuel tank i made i've um, got a tech arrow to supply the ignition module i made two shelves for my pulse batteries uh, they both plug into a Buma RC pin flag switch, which is right here. It's pretty neat. It's, you can just pull the pin and it's ready to go. Push it in, it's done. So that's a fuel dot from Northwest RC, also known as a Kuza fuel dot. It's magnetic, works pretty good. I like the Tigon on there. It's cheap, and it fits it pretty well. Decided to put my throttle servo right there. I found a little servo holder that I glued there in place with some uh, Dubro blue uh, control rod. Goes all the way to the throttle. Helps you with vibration and all that fun stuff. Uh, hard to see right here, but I have a choke rod connected to a uh, little little plate that I made back there. So I can just pull that arm to choke it and then push it in when when it after it popped keep going um okay back in here i've got utaba 7014 sb receiver using most of the ports it's kind of nice to have that big receiver back there uh, i started using these uh like all-in-one mpx connectors um they were connected to the frame, but they actually popped out a few times, I think due to vibration and whatnot. So I just left them uh, detached and that seemed to solve my problem. Never had them come apart since. And that is about all you can see from here.